Hello, welcome, good afternoon, and thank you for being with us today. We're broadcasting live from Park City, Utah, and Amber's in Texas, and Anna and Matt are somewhere else. Also in Texas, also in, in Austin. In Texas, uh, and um, Berman is in uh, Mexico, right? Uh, so thank you all for being here. I know some of you uh, are aware of uh, and perhaps attended the uh, last webinar we did, the Luminary Series, where we got to know Amber and their team uh, a little bit better. And so thank you for joining with us today. Um, we can't hear or see you physically, but we know you, you're there. And so uh, as your questions come to mind, please post them in the chat or the Q&A. We'll monitor them. And we have a bunch of folks coming on today, so we'll make sure we get to as many as possible. Also, uh, I'll remind you that you're totally at liberty um, to communicate this, uh, uh, what you see today. If there's others that are interested that you know, you're most uh, willing, you're most able to communicate. We're Family Office Insights, as you know, doesn't stand in the way for you communicating directly and referring others that might be interested in participating in this round. This, unlike the last, uh, uh, webinar we did is designed to be clear and talk more about the raise that's happening, including what's going on in business development way and uh, a, a, uh, a sample of the, uh, the video I think we're going to have uh, showing a demonstration of the software. Uh, for, for some of you that weren't in the last webinar, it was super cool because there was no more better endorsement than uh, YouTube Shorts and Dell to come on the people who were apps voted with their checkbook as customers, and we had to stop them from talking because they were so excited about what Amber's doing. It was super super cool. It was no, it was, it was there, there was no mistake about their passion about how well this has worked for them in in their respective business silos. The YouTube Shorts and Dell, I think, was largely in helping the employees collaborate. Right. More, yep. more than customers, right? Uh, so it was really nice to see. And uh, we also, of course, have a, a recording of that uh, and anybody can take a look at. So uh, again, please post your questions as they come to mind. If there's anybody that uh, you think would be interested after you see what you see today, you're more than welcome to uh, bring them in and, and uh, have them chat with the team here. So with that, Amber, thanks for coming back again. Yeah, it's good to see you. Happy. Good to see everybody here. You take it away. All right, perfect. Well, I'll introduce quickly my team. Um, Anna, if she'll do a little right hand raise, she's our CXO. Uh, she handles all the customer success, the production done on the platform software, and um, has been with us over eight years. So she knows her stuff forward and backward. Matt here, Matt Daly, he is our head of VP of product. He's been with us uh, in multiple ways over the last five years and as our head of product for the last year. And so excited to have both of them on the call today. Today, I want to tell you a little bit about the business, and then we're going to show you a demo. And then you're going to hear from my team as well uh, about the product. So, so let's kick this off a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and um, get that started. All right. Looks good. Perfect. So let me tell you a little bit about us as a company, and then I'll dive in. So first off, um, I am a corporate kid. I like to say a corporate kid uh, stumbled into being an entrepreneur, and it's been 10 years now. So I've had successful businesses, led profitable companies, and I'm very excited by the product and technology we built. My background is at Disney. I was Disney, then Warner Brothers. And if your kids watch esports, or you do... I did the first ever arena event and built a strategy for Riot Games League of Legends. In that time, I saw something in creating this sport. It was the ecosystem behind a digital platform that lets you own your community. I left Riot Games and started AA. Time it was, we have grown at, over these last 10 years. And over a decade now, we've created immersive technology-driven experiences and we've run it as a profitable business. Eight years in, about, about 2017, one of the technologies that we built. Now, if you're a Friends fan, 
you've seen our work. We did an app for Friends, the TV show. We don't have, created all the technology with AR. We worked with Apple as a developer. And for Warner Brothers, created an app that had over a million downloads. We've worked with brands, everyone you can see here on the side, from Discord, bringing them to market, to HTC Vive, to Magically. And our what we would do is bring these campaigns to market with these products and build technology around them so people understood what the product was. What happened was Unity and Unreal was our clients and they are digital gaming engines. And we started building these digital worlds when COVID happened. World closed down that technology that we had really accelerated. And one of the projects we did really helped shape um, the failure of that product helped shape the success of this business. We built a 3D digital world for DC fandom. They had 24 million people that interacted on it, 200 countries. And guys, this was right in August of 2020 when another COVID had happened, the second COVID. Everybody's at home, yet 95% were on their mobile phone. And we realized that this was going to be a global product that mil billions downloaded, then we needed to make sure that we had a scalable product. So in July of 2021, we ended up buying a technology company, bringing that CTO over, joining forces, and we built AA Labs. And AA Labs combined the experiences of all these digital worlds of this technology and the VR and AR and all forms of community interactions. And we built a product that solved the problem that our clients truly needed. Now, what's that problem? The problem is, guys, we're doing it right now. <laughs> Digital communication just has not kept up with how we naturally interact with each other. If we were all sitting around a conference table right now, I'd be able to see you, I could read your body language, there would be this whole different dialogue that could happen. But we're in Zoom, and Zoom is these square boxes that goes one-on-one. -on -one. So as if that wasn't already a problem, we all know because of that, no one's paying attention. And this isn't even in our employees or what we're doing right now in the people that we meet or the interactions of how we meet people all over. It's also in our marketing tools. Let's talk about TikTok. They're the gold standard of what is good of interactions and what keeps people engaged in the marketing way. And even they are 54% are distract distracted and multitasking. So we know this is a problem. We know all the platforms that are out there. I love the data of 20 plus walled guarded communications. And we know this, right? Right now, in the next hour, while you're on this call, not only will you be multitasking, you'll be getting a WhatsApp. You'll get a text. You're going to get a Slack, a phone call. I know I'm giving heart palpitations just thinking about it. But it's this whole world of content. And our content is so fragmented across all these. Look at your computer right now, the web tabs you have open. And this multiple platforms, all of this generating task switching, confusion, this is a big problem. So what's the solution? Well, the solution is exactly what we've built. It's an immersive website where communities such as you guys can collaborate, connect, learn together, and have all of their tools in one place does not mean we recreate Miro or whiteboards or Airtable, Sauna, any of those. We pull them in. And what AA platform, AA Labs platform does is I like to call it a third space. We're making that online interaction feel real. And what does that mean? Well, I mean, it means when we're in a room together, we can engage. We can take the tools that we're comfortable with and we can actually utilize those reducing the task switching, increasing our engagement, having that human connection, which has truly been lost. And here's the thing. I always love this. I love this slide. So a lot of you are going to relate to this. This is where we grew up. This first picture right here. You had a tape recorder, a VCR, a, all these digital radios, phones, all of it in one place. And what did the iPhone do? It took all of those and put them in one device. And that's exactly what we're doing. We're taking all of the tools that content that is out there and putting it in one immersive website. That is a key. Immersive website, not another app that you need to download. 
Apple is a client of ours. They let us know that 80% of apps that are downloaded are deleted within the first two weeks. If that is the case, then we need to give someone something they're very familiar with and easy and frictionless, and that's that immersive website. So what I want to do now is I want to actually show you the product. I want to let you see exactly, because we're not talking about a concept. We are talking about a software that is built that, and we'll get into it, that companies like Dell, if you watch the video, Dell, Google, AT&T, and many others are on already participating in multiple countries. So Anna, why don't you go ahead? I'll stop sharing here. And, hey, Amber. Yeah. Can I just mention something that struck me the sure. initial time that we spoke? And maybe it's a good thing to uh, for the audience to know while they're watching the demo is that brands suffer from not owning their communities, right? Yep. Because TikTok, Instagram, all, they own the, the, the people who are on their platforms and they it, it's impossible for the brands to get any analytics from them because they own them. And so yeah. this is one way to bring the, what do you call them? The super communities? Yeah, the your super, super fans. Your yeah, super the super fans in <clears throat> to a community that the brands own. Yep. Yeah, exactly. And that's been the head of um, enterprise software for Paramount, of all of Paramount Plus. Um, she looked at our software and she said, this is exactly what we need. And you know what? She gave the example to your point, Arthur. She said 10 years ago, we gave all of our content away to the OTTs, like Hulu and Netflix, and they became our competition. And we didn't know what people were watching and downloading. Right. She goes, now we've realized five years ago, we started giving all of our communities away to the platform. And when all of the stuff happened in December, where the agencies didn't want to do business on Twitter, she said, we lost 46% of our revenue off Yellowstone because of all of our community was on Twitter, yet we didn't know who they were and the brands would not let us market there. And Angie goes, on top of that, we don't even have the data. And this is a massive problem, right? If you don't know who your audience is, who are you building for? And yeah. if you can't get the feedback and you don't know how long they're interacting on stuff, then how do you know what you should be making more of products? And so that's been, you're exactly right. The biggest thing that we did, and you'll see from this demo, uh, as Anna goes ahead and shares her screen, is we actually built, and I'd love to, Art, that this is what you're, you're talking about. We actually built this as a place that plays well with these 20 plus platforms out there. We can pull in Substack and YouTube and TikTok and Twitter. And when you click on the video that you'll see in here, you get your impressions back on YouTube. It's not another thing that these influencers or brands have to go and fight for. It pulls them all together in one. Yeah, super yeah. cool. Thanks for that. Yeah, so let me show you a demo and then I'll hand this over to Anna. But just before I, I need you to take over and you come in, this is um, a web page, like I said, an immersive web page. So you can see it's got a URL. She logs in. Now, Anna's going to sign in as an admin. Uh, because our clients would be an admin. They have special privileges that they can do into the world. You people, get people out, you know, edit, things like that. And then you set your mic and camera and microphones. So we're going into the world. We have built um, all, everything you see here is our technology. After the demo, Matt will go into that. So you can see that nothing's a plug-in. So look at that. There's Anna. Anna, I'll go ahead and let you. And then we even have for me and our head of operations in here so you could see what it looks like with multiple people. Everybody. So this is all real time happening right yeah. now. This is real time. This is no videos. And this also shows you how easy and frictionless she's literally on a Zoom as well as pulling up another web page, interacting. Now, Matt is also joining the party. <laughs> so, yeah. And this is like I said, this is. Um, the we started here in one of the rooms as who is double A as our our interaction. So what we'll do is on I'll have you walk through some of the value and the features, and then she's gonna um, Arthur. To one of the things you asked for last time, we actually have individual rooms that give y'all real case studies that clients of ours are using them for or going to be using, and all of the clients that you've seen here have given us approval to share. 
Got it. Thanks. Mm -hmm. So as you can see that we're all in the world right now, there's three of us in this space. The idea is that we're building a collaborative platform that where, and like Zoom, where you're kind of just stuck in a box. And I tend to look at everyone's backgrounds and see you know, what, what they like and what their interests are. In a space like this, I'm able to kind of focus at the topic at hand. We give them an immersive space that they're drawn into, but then also gives them actionable information that they can explore. And the beautiful part about it is, if I click to watch this video right now, Matt and Fermin are not seeing the video play on their side. So we're giving you a singular experience that you can find what interests you and make you learn in a better way while they can do the exact same thing on their screen. But because we're all in the same shared space, you know, on a normal website, you just scroll, scroll and click. You don't get to actually interact with other people. But what we've built in is called spatial audio. So right now, the entire room is blue, which acts like Zoom, right? It's one to many. You all have to listen to us while we're talking. And if we try to have side conversations, we can only do it through chat. But if I toggle this down, you'll notice that there's a blue circle around each of us. That now represents the throw of our voice. So Matt can hear me and we're chit-chatting, but if he goes over to Fermin, you'll notice that we're no longer touching blue circles. I have no idea what they're actually saying over there. So we can do real life style conversations in a digital space that you can't do in a lot of other places. Um, so super they're doing their cool. own thing. Over I there. didn't know that, Amber. That's yeah. super cool. Yeah, yeah, this has been super beneficial for whiteboarding, team collaboration, the awkwardness a lot of times when you're waiting for a lot of people to come into a meeting, um, as well as we've had seen the engagements go through the roof um, because it allows our introverts to actually go over and ask questions and talk to people without being worried that 60 people in a room are going to hear them. Or as you can see, like how for me and it's like using the digital emojis, we built different forms of communication instead of just comms. You can, you have your normal comms, like Anna is typing here, you can close that and actually have more of the emojis or you can send a vibe. So how she just sent an accolade to Fermin and those can be personalized. Like at and they wanted to send the at and logo over, someone else wanted a different emoji. And then Anna, if you'll click on the different emojis on the bottom, you can see different forms. So that's a great way of showing just communication, but communication is only one piece of what we need for our online to be a virtual engagement. The other form is how we learn. Like I'm a visual person. Anna over here, show the data one. Anna, you love to have more of like reading stuff, downloading PowerPoints, things like that. Then you can do that from here. Exactly. And what we're trying to do is aggregate the most important pieces of information that you, you may need to get across in a meeting. So this room is all about who we are as a company. And so we've chosen our sizzle video, our case studies that open up and talk about the different brands that we've worked with. It also has our capabilities deck that you can now download from here and potentially send to somebody else if you think they would be interested. So we're using tools that we've already created and bringing them into one product like Amber mentioned. But it's not just about this one room. It's about creating an ecosystem of information for maybe different departments or different brands who have different purposes. So you'll notice over here, we have a directory. I'm going to jump into the creator hub room and it just hyperlinks you into a new space. So this is an example of what we've built with YouTube Shorts. And you'll see this room for them is specifically a place where creators can come together, learn about the tips and trends of the week, watch what people are creating and get ideas about how they can create something themselves. But while they're in here, they can also talk to other creators and say, hey, you like sports? I like sports. Let's do a collaboration together. So now we're giving them more than just resources. We're giving them an opportunity to have conversations with people who are of like-mindedness. Or if you want to collaborate on something else, we've also embedded a whiteboard in here. People can see, say where they're from. They can uh, say what they're interested in doing. And we've created a type of feedback loop for brands and for the creators to meet other people who might they might want to do something with. Yeah. So this is and just I, one example. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think what's really cool about this as well is this room for Google, if you notice that whiteboard, it's actually used, that same whiteboard is used in seven different licenses all over of different influencers from Japan to Indonesia to Brazil, to Europe, to the US, to Canada. So they all share, if you can see, you can see other people are in there right now. 
you can actually see different pieces of communication being shared across multiple groups of influencers, no matter where they are in the world. And the competition, though, is run individually based on localization of their license. So what's fascinating, though, is to what Anna just said, is I love this little keynote session. They always have a call to action, a call back. So this room stays open all the time. And then, Anna, would you mind showing the rooms on the hub? That kind of shows you different rooms that are available. You can hide them. You can password protect them. But it's a great way of um, when a lunch and learn or like what we're doing right now, a certain session comes open, then they open a room and unlock it. So it's always on repeatable. Yeah. And so let's just say we go from being a creator into sports, right? Uh, Cavaliers fair. are sponsoring something. So they create a locker room of opportunities that you can get as a super fan of the Cavaliers, whether it be signing up and getting people to drive traffic and drive sales for them to watching exclusive content over here. And maybe this interview has been seen nowhere else but here, but you're giving fans a reason to come back as well as also how do you get feedback from them? You know, what do they want to see next? Be maybe being created by, um, you know, swag or what if they, you know, who do they want to have a meet and greet with next in this space? They can now give you feedback in real time so that you're able to curate experiences for them that they're actually going to attend and want to take part in. So this is a way that you can do multiple things. And then ultimately, the idea that people need is to drive sales, right? So we're able to pull in websites and um, other things that have already been created to shop. And then people can also make the purchases directly from here as well. So how can you bring it all together and how cool would it be to shop with your friend? You know, typically you say, can I, let me try this on. Does this look good? You guys can all ooh and ah over the same type of cool swag that's being dropped by brands. So I think that's a good, um, I want to show you one more and then we're going to, mm -hmm. then um, for me and then Matt, you can go ahead and jump, uh, jump off of the world. Let's close here with the future of work. So we have three verticals, which we will get into in the deck. Um, we've talked about the creator hub, which honestly, team, is more of like a channel partners. When I was at Warner Brothers, we had all our retailers. They were the people that went out to the consumers. We have found that our channel partners, which is what YouTube, TikTok, Substack, all of these companies of at at and they're using this to talk to their influencers who are all over. But those influencers are their businesses, right? They're the ones going off and creating content. What you're looking at here, and then I'll hand it over to Anna, is actually one of our rooms. We have our own intranet that's on our product, and we use Rippling. You can see our org chart, our culture deck, and inside this room is how we onboard people. Exactly. And so when you have a new employee or you want to bring someone on a program, a lot of times we get a lot of emails and you don't always get to read all of them. You can't remember where it was. So by creating a resource center that aggregates all that information, as a new employee, I can walk in here with HR, get a message from our CEO. I can, um, you know, figure out how to actually, you know, onboard with the company all the way through, you know, taking forms and filling out more about me so that the company gets to know who I am. And that goes out to the entire company. But the great part about this is we've built this. So it's not only about us having to build a room for you, we're putting it back into the hands of you as the purchaser. So we have an admin panel down here with the plus sign that I can go to say video, grab my favorite YouTube link, and it shares directly within the world. So I'm making it as easy as Instagram to upload and to edit things and to move things around. So now it's ready to play and anybody could watch it. And just as easy as I added it, I'm able to delete it. So it's being able to put tools in the hands of the users to make it easier to use for employees, but then also how can you give that back to your fans as well to create this amazing ecosystem that's not going to take a lot of time to put together. Perfect. All right. And obviously there's a ton more features in the back end system for anybody that's interested, happy to, to go through it, give demos. Uh, after this, we will send the hub that you just saw on a walk through. It's a live and open world, so you can go and interact. You would come in as a guest, but we're happy to show more of the admin panels. So like I said, it's very robust. You can do uh, quite a bit. So what I want to do is come back. Thank you, Anna, for that. I want to come back here, and I want Matt to talk to you a little bit about the technology itself. Sure. Thanks, Amber, and thanks, y'all, for being here. Um, you know, from a product standpoint, uh, we've done things a little bit differently. Um, 
and that's put us in some sort of unique positions as far as leverage and and um, competitive advantage. Um, you know, one of the principal principal ways that we've taken a different direction than any of our competitors are in the realm of scale. So we're able to scale um, ten times the amount of, that Zoom is, for instance, in the same space. Um, we've also made a pretty unique choice that keeps us free and on our own roadmap, uh, which is part of our scale uh, strategy, which is our patent pending audio video solution. So we've built our own audio. We're not licensing. We're not locked into any long-term deals. We're not beholden to anybody else's roadmap and uh, have much less vulnerability to um, those variables that we've seen other organizations succumb to, both from lost profits, value left on the table, and straight up integrations and in technology just being abandoned by uh, other organizations. So hugely de-risking and also allows us to scale. Um, the tools we offer are no code. So all the customization that Anna uh, has shown off there is uh, just purely, purely visual and growing. Um, there are no downloads. It's all based in the browser, mobile and desktop. We've also built our own analytics system. So again, another de-risking and allows us to move at speed to market and reach product market fit much faster than our competitors. And we own our own destiny from a technology standpoint. And we don't require any plugins to run. It all just runs uh, under the hood. You wanna to move to the next slide, please. Uh, so in brief, I mean, Amber referred to the, to the different verticals that we're focusing on. At its core, at its very nugget of essence of the real business problem that this product is solving for these different verticals, it is taking your most valuable audience, making them more valuable to you, extracting more value, whatever that value is in the form of KPIs and targets, whether it's sales, productivity results, fan engagement, deepening and widening that at scale repeatedly at lower cost. So lowering cost to increase value. It's very, very simple actually. And sort of the way that we triangulate ourselves is slices of some products. There are no products that do everything that we do. So what we have to do is take examples from products that are adjacent to us and demonstrate hopefully how we do better. So when it comes to affinity communities, for instance, that live largely on Discord, we have uh, quantified based off of analytics, uh, we chart three times the amount of active participation. So that is three times the amount of people actively engaging in the conversation, uh, actively engaging in the event, talking to each other, sending emojis, all the different spectrum of things that you can do on the platform. For Creator Hub, the creator communities, um, you know, again, TikTok, the gold standard for engagement, right? We have three times a session retention duration. That's the amount of time on average over the course of a period of time um, that audiences stay and participate, right? So three times TikTok. And then again, uh, as, I've, as I've referenced, uh, when it comes to future of work, a lot of those people live on Zoom, which is where we are right now, obviously. And we uh, we offer 10 times the scale of Zoom. Yeah, and I think what's what's great about this is knowing our verticals, knowing our product market fit, which a year ago we did not, right? We really thought future of work was gonna be a huge vertical of ours. And honestly, the last six months, eight months of us being on this product, full out thousands of people getting this data back, we've actually found our creator hub is the biggest vertical, not only because it was 1.3 million in ARR from there, but everybody you see here under Creator Hub, AT&T, YouTube, Dell, and hopefully you got to see the video with our clients that came on uh, for the last webinar, but all of those are signed year longs. Now we're on the second year with Dell and going into YouTube, AT&T is just signed. They're already trying about scaling and going up on the packages. Cleveland Cavaliers coming on 
um, on the future of work. We do have Dell already, another version of Dell, another department of Dell on it. So I'll get into some of our clients, but we've definitely been able to see based on our product market fit. So what did we do? Well, me and Anna really nerded out on our MarTech we, uh, for the TAM space. We spent hours on this. I've never uh, enjoyed a TAM more than once you know what your product market fit is, because then you can really dive in. In the MarTech space, we took all of the clients that were sitting in that map, and we actually have this Excel document happy to send out. We looked at all the categories that we sat in, and 45% of the subcategories, we were right in the sweet spot. And they're like, okay, but come on, Amber, you can't go after the $68 billion. So let's really hone in more. Like David Sachs always says it best. If you're going into a something, go find your real, real sweet spot, focus there, turn them into your ambassadors, and then scale out. And that's exactly what we did in the social and relationships. That's one of the categories that is about 11%. So we took 10% of our MarTech and that's how we got to this addressable market. And what I love is if you look at these little bullet points, we're already doing every single one of these for every single one of our clients. Customer experiences from their internal super fans. What is the influencers? They're all on this. Advocacy, loyalty, and referrals. We've been able to build the loyalty programs, exactly what we're building out with the Cavaliers. Community and reviews. Anna showed you the polls and trivia and pieces there. And then events, meetings, and webinars are constantly being held on the software as well. So what I think is really cool about this, the other side is, well, then who's your competition? Because Matt just referenced, well, if you've got different groups that are really big, like Discord and TikTok and Zoom that are doing one piece of this, who out there is trying to do what you're doing? So I'm going to talk a little bit about this, and then Matt um, is going to jump in as well. But here's what I wanted to do, because we've all heard. I loved what the other day when I was talking to Disney. They're like, well, how are you different than hopping? All right. So if you're looking at my screen right now, the picture here on the top right, that's our product. I know. You already knew that because you've done it in that mode, but just want to make sure you saw. You got no silly avatars. None of this, where do I look? I mean, you're not real in an avatar, so nobody ever knows where to look. No running into stuff. So you can see our product here and they're all collaborating and doing accolades. On the bottom left is your Teams and there is a product on, in Microsoft Teams called Mesh. People have literally asked us, how are you different from Mesh? Well, you can see that there as a visual. There's Hopin, which is just another version of a better Zoom. Gather is a future of work product that looks like a little 8-bit. I, mean, I like the little Zelda look, but that is all it is. And Vatom is another competition one out there that is a metaverse 3D that is very hard to download and takes a long time to go in. And you can't edit yourself. You use your templates. So what we did is we broke out. Remember, our clients helped us build this. We had, had such a great reputation building technology for them. We literally had the CMO of, of uh, Dell. We had an executive at Apple, someone at Nike. All of these different groups come in as we are building this and help us focus group it. Number one thing they needed was scalability. Number two, the only way you can do that is to build your own comms. You can't have plugins, which every single one of Gather and Vatom do. Teams and Hopin has their own video. Ease of use, super easy. I need y'all to be able to, all of y'all to just click on a web link and be able to get in and be interacting and working on this within 20 seconds. You can do that. Engagement connection, how am I engaging? How am I actually letting you know that you're seen? How do I have conversations? In-platform integrations, super important because you don't need to learn another whiteboard. We can pull the whiteboards you use. Google Documents, you've already got Google Docs your teams work on. By pulling it in here, you're not exporting it. You're collaborating on a doc you already do. And the future proof is very important. And Matt talked a little bit about Matt the technology. But that's a big piece because you've got to be able to scale to where the world is going. So as Apple comes out with their new devices and AR, I mean, Apple always does great product stuff. We can scale to where the market needs to go because the technology is built to do so. Anna, Matt, did I miss anything on this? Nope. Nope. I think you nailed it. All right. Perfect. So let's talk numbers because we're all finance people here. Let's talk about the numbers. So in the last uh, last six months, we have grown our ARR by 12X. Now, 
I've had many people ask me, now why last year were you at 7 million and this year you're at 7.1 million? Well, because I saw that we wanted to take this company to a SaaS company. Your margins on an event company, even programming online custom worlds are around 20 to 25%. My margins on our product are closer to 85 to 93%. It's just good business. And so what we've been able to do since July of 2021 is launch the technology. Then last year we launched in beta. And in October, we launched with YouTube where thousands of people came on it. And honey, you don't go to a Disney and a Google and Nike with a product that's buggy. You go to them with a product that they can do, that they can talk, that they can interact on. And that's exactly what we realized. We were at that MVP point when we hit October. So then we were off to the races. So already we are at 1.8 million ARR this year alone. And then on top of that, we're also making program and platform services because it's always good business to help people know how to use a great product. And so what we're doing is on his team, and you saw some of the, the worlds, we're also getting additional dollars to help them utilize the product, do great programming. We're then creating case studies of those. And we take them to partners like Profit, Omnicom, different marketing agencies that they then can go out there to their 35,000 clients and go and sell this as well. So this is a little bit, we have a 394% growth um, in SaaS uh, year over year. And um, this just kind of shows you. So live events, programming online, that was last year in 2022. We did the full conversion to SaaS over the last two years. And this year we'll end the year in 4.8 million ARR. So Amber, yeah. um, recurring revenue multiples are much more interesting yeah. on an exit. And I'm not saying where you're going, but the have you had enough time to demonstrate retention? Yeah. Yeah. That's what's been exciting. So we started with Dell. Uh, actually, that leads great into this slide. You hadn't even seen it. Um, <laughs> we, uh, we started with Dell as a pro package. We got team pro and enterprise, and they obviously scale up in cost. Our average ARR um, license for these enterprises is about 365,000. Uh, but this is a great example. So Dell started with one pro package. They have re-signed. It's now the third year, second year on the product. And they have re-signed with not only one, but they bought two enterprise packages. They were our first one. Now we've come up to YouTube. YouTube has, uh, they've been one year on uh, the product as well. They're coming up this month. They had a pro in October, another division within YouTube saw it, YouTube Shorts. They ended up trying it for a month as a month license, great BD tool, loved it. And then they bought three enterprises and they have just let us know that they are going to be buying four next year, which gives them seven countries. So again, with enterprise, we have add-on packages and things like that, but there's the base price. Eight, so we've had two clients fully re-sign, renew. Had, so we've had um, land and expand. And we've had network um, spread. So where they've gone in, where Dell had one, now they had where you see that one team equals one pro. That's another client within Dell. Whole nother division is using it for future work. This client, as I mentioned on our last call, is using it for their ambassador and university program. This one also expanded their program from a smaller package to a larger package only three months in. AT&T is our third largest client that has come on. They came on in March. Yes, it's only May. They signed a year-long package and they've already come back to us to ask for a second license for their Brazil team. And they wanna move into an enterprise package for their other countries. So we're seeing really great, to your question, are there really great land and expand as well as spreading within companies? I mean, this is the greatest part about virtual. With our MRR, which is our monthly one, we have a, a package that's anywhere between 25 and 50,000. It's more because you have, we, you know, we want to make sure that they want to try it. They come in and they sign for a second license or a third license. They have these things for a month to two months to try it. 
Every single one that's been on MMR, MRR, I'm going to knock on wood while I say that, every single one that's on MRR has expanded into licensed year-long programs. So that gives you a good example in that side. And then what's our pipeline? Because one of the things that we need to make sure is that we have a healthy pipeline. One of the key things, not only did we, by taking the company that had been a very profitable business in running work for hire tech and events, and rolling it into AA Labs, we kept 50 legal contracts with these Fortune 500 companies. So that means when Google decided that they wanted to bring us on, it took us less than a month to get from yes to sign contract. These companies you're seeing here, we have contracts with, we have NDAs signed, we have MSAs, multiple different things so that we can move fast and move quick. And those relationships are super important when a company is trying to scale fast. Uh, and and they, we have conversations going on. And the piece I wanna talk about here that we have is I mentioned our team pro and enterprise. We also have built into the technology already ways to make additional uh, revenue from microtransactions on your purchases to additional license of programming to um, freemiums that we've been looking at as we scale over the next few years that people can have individually at a lower cost pr price. Um, so we've already been building those out and building um, revenue streams to them. And it's only possible because of the team we have. So not only did we have a great foundation of our clients, we also had a great foundation of our team. As I mentioned, Anna's been here eight years. Mike's been here four years. Matt has been with us off and on for multiple years as well. Fermina has been on six years. And Aaron Murray is the one that, that our CTO that has been on with us for two and a half years of the technology company brought on and has multiple successful exits himself. So we've got a strong team also with a lot of gaming and enterprise experience, which is key when you're building a technology that needs to be engaging and keep that sticky factor. So let's talk about a little bit about where we're gonna do the use of proceeds. Uh, right now we are doing, we are finishing up a bridge loan, uh, bridge, I'm sorry, bridge uh, round. Uh, we've had the co-president of Marvel has come in on that. We've had the chief physician of United Healthcare, Optum Healthcare come in. We've had a technology, um, a hedge fund a guy that's built multiple companies, and we've had um, quite a few YPOers that have come in that have been great strategics. And uh, John Elway from like um, uh, sports as well, because I do believe sports is going to be a massive vertical for us. And so we will be closing this this uh, bridge round. We have six clients right now that we are in contract negotiations with. I've referenced a few of them from IBM to Deloitte to Northern Trust to uh, the Cleveland Cavaliers, you others, and Miss Universe. And a lot of these uh, we have locked in, and then we will go for our price round in Q3, Q4. So right now, what we are doing with the use of funds is uh, we are going to build a BD and sales team. And we have, and we're gonna build some marketing support. So right now we have no marketing, we have no sales. You're looking at it. Um, I am the sales person. Uh, and uh, Anna and her team do a great job of farming internally and doing demos as they come in through our websites, but we need to build a, a sales team. We have a very clear plan, and we actually have people and candidates that we've been looking at and keeping warm that are in the verticals that we have the biggest revenue. So one is going into the, the channel partners, like I mentioned, the marketing firms, um, companies such as Omnicom, Viral Nation, different groups. That go out there. The second vertical is sports with those affinity communities. That's a big one. The NBA and the NFL, we're in conversations. We've had multiple calls with um, and the individual teams. So these are two uh, verticals we're going to build BD people in. And then we don't even do much in the SEO group. So we're going to focus on marketing and uh, programming inside of our hub. And then obviously data. We did not show you the admin panel but we have full data analytics. So you can know where people walk, what they move, what they click on. We wanna make that more robust. We wanna make it tap into Tableau so that full analytics and graphics can be there and um, just really build out um, different pieces of tech 
that refines parts of this. So that is the presentation. I'd love to hear questions from you uh, and things that you may have, and I'll stop sharing. Just, just to be clear, Amber, the ask for this round? Yes, yeah, so the ask for this round is actually, that's where we had reached out, Arthur, is they can come in on uh, this bridge round that we're doing. Uh, we have 1.3 left of it. We were doing a two mil. Uh, we opened it up, what, three and a half weeks ago, I think, when we did the webinar. It was one of the first times we opened it up. So we've, we've been pulling in good strategics. It is at a safe note at a 30 mil valuation. So we have an outside 409 from Carta that put us at 64 million last year. We felt that was way too high because the market was too high last year. So we kept it at uh, the 30 mil and that is the cap. And so what, what will the next round look like if you had to? Say? Yeah, I mean, I'm having those conversations now. That's why I wanna get these clients um, locked in. Right now, the conversation is closer between 50 and 60. Yeah. And I did have a term sheet from one small investor. We only allowed one uh, local small investor team to come in on our friends and family last year. Um, but he was tied in with the Silicon Valley Bank. And um, after all that happened, he didn't feel comfortable leading. So we decided to do this bridge, go ahead and sign a couple more, we look about a million more in revenue. Um, so we're at 3.4 million in revenue right now. And what? 2 million ARR. Right. Nice. Um, can you just pick one of the customers sure. and demonstrate, you don't have to show us, but just tell us how they're using it and why they renewed their license if it's the one you'd pick? Yeah, I have a great one. And, and I, I know we have um, a little video on this as well. If Adi, you want to pull up the, the Dell one, we can show a little video so people have a visual. Here's a great example. So Dell, our first client that came on to the software, um, they hired us. They had done this program for college kids. So they had 36 college kids that would go out. They'd meet on Zoom every week and they would teach them like Dell computers. I mean, it's hard to make Dell computers sexy, but we were working on it. <laughs> and they were working on content, like on Instagram, TikTok, organic content. And they were micro community, micro influencers. So these college kids from Harvard to USC to UCLA and over, we had 36 different colleges represented. They would go and make content. They'd meet up on Zoom, share best practices or do on emails. And that was back in 2020. And they had 1.3 million impressions from that. Okay. Last year, that program moved on to our software. Now, instead of these squares, and Anna, if you have a visual, you're welcome to share your screen. Now they're meeting up in the Dell University. And the university allowed these kids, if they were Alienware influencers, which is a gaming computer, or Dell XPS influencers, which usually cared more about like being an entrepreneur, you know, a graphic design, things like that. They would meet up in different rooms, talk and coordinate, share best practices. Again, kind of similar to your program, right? Like where people can meet each other. And um, are you ready? We had 8.9 million impressions and over 800,000 likes and shares. Same group so of people. Same group, same amount of people. So this is a good example of the Dell world. In one of the rooms, you can have Intel came in as a sponsor. They hadn't before. Uh, these kids would meet up. They'd share best practices and content. But um, yeah, it, it, so that was all earned media, no paid media behind it. So you asked who resigned. This is a good example. They could find the computers and there's multiple rooms um, that you can actually go into that will actually share like how they shared social media and pieces like that. So, and we won't go through all of it, but you can just kind of see how different ones went. Here's what they did. So they resigned, and it wasn't just in the US anymore. Now they've resigned it in India. And that program that they already had an agency running it, that agency is still running it. It's just on our software. So they bought three licenses and they now have upped it to 64 college kids. So they moved, they literally canceled. They said they had canceled about $7 million in their marketing group, but they kept this program because it was the most successful. So connect the dot for me. Uh, impressions I get, the increase I get, 
What does that do for Dell? Yeah, I mean, the, the biggest thing that Dell is trying to do is change the mindset that Mac is cool. Right. Yeah. Mac was very smart years, 15 years ago, they went after the younger audience in the colleges. And so what Dell is doing is by making organic content, you and I both know we don't pay attention to ads. Things that are commercials do not resonate as well. Grassroot marketing at its best has always been. Yeah, your so, peers, right? Uh, exactly. And this is just grassroot marketing going digital. And so what they did is they had a hub to learn from each other competition, best practices, and that helped level up everybody. And that was the only difference in the program is that they had a place to engage. Remember, we're not paying these kids <laughs> in this world to come, right? So they're not, they had engaged, had to be fun for them to show up. They had to be a, want to be a part of the program and they had to learn how to be great influencers. And then when they got to certain levels, they could be paid or get prizes or things like that. And all of that was run through the software. So that is a good example of very similar how YouTube and now AT&T has influencers coming on, helping them learn, connect, collaborate, and have a place that they, they, uh, they can meet. Aside from the correcting, if you want to call it that, the perception of Dell being not sexy or cool, how did they, can, was there a way as a result of them using your platform to make a direct connection between impressions and activity and sales? Yeah, so they have a formula on their side because we did end up talking with that group. They don't share it with us, but we did get the numbers at the end because that's their data. But um, they have a, a they have a formula that shows based on the CPMs, like how much impression they they believe that they get X sales. But one of the things that we were able to do is we, you notice we had the website of the computers. So as the kids came in, when they purchased inside there, we could track that directly back. Yeah. To and that's the same with the Cavaliers. Yeah. That's the same with, um, with Paramount when they're looking at this and they did a, a, a small one that they could actually go and track how much sales was led. What was the opinions? What was the feedback? So they got all these free focus groups. Dell did as well. So they get this feedback loop that they didn't have to pay for. That yeah. was a part of the program. You can also track the advocates for when they started the program and what their follower count was till the end of the program. We can see the uptick and how by us uh, bringing in speakers and Dell, you know, putting uh, effort into making them better creators show that their content got better and they got more likes and views, which ultimately get more eyes back for Dell, right? And so by investing in them and by Dell investing in them, they invest in better content, which get more eyes, which then gets Dell more money. So we're creating this kind of circular cycle that if we just continue to invest in them, they will ultimately produce more effort and more um, you know, sentiment back for Dell brands. Same thing with YouTube. It's that they can get more people to create better content, more people are more likely to stay on the product. Was the first group of people in the Dell before AA Labs, were they the super fans? I'm using the wrong words, but did no, they- no, I understand. Yeah, because we have three verticals, right? One is your creator hub. So they were the creator hub vertical. Yeah. The other one is affinity communities or super fans. That is where, that is more of those loyalty programs. So like the Spurs, the Cavaliers, Paramount, they're using that right now. As, as pilots, as so none of my MRR or pilots is counted in my ARR revenue, obviously. So um, just to make that side note. Yeah, but yeah, well, so that's uh, what the, the affinity community, communities are. So when they had the first group of people, I'm actually going somewhere with this, hang on. Uh, the Were those people ones that had already demonstrated to Dell that they like the product? No. no. So ironically, oh. a lot of the student advocates focused on college age university students, most of them have Macs. And so when we go and we find the advocates, we do a curating process to see kind of what their follower count. Are they kind of following the trends of technology or gaming or, or creativeness? And we curate that list. And many of them, we send them the product and then they begin to utilize it and post it. And then they begin to slowly switch over 
and become an advocate and loyalty for Dell because of the type of products and what they're receiving, not just because they're there and they have to post about it, right? And so most of the students were actually converting over, and then some people never go back once their contracts are done or the program has finished for the year. We're actually seeing the advocates getting re-signed. We had about 15 of the 25 from last year re-signed for this year. And then we're, do, we're actually adding more advocates to the program this year globally because the program was so successful. So we're seeing quite the opposite. So yeah. one thing I want to just touch base on this, this business model here is we have built this software so that anybody at Dell could run this program straight on it. What we found is because the big boys, they like to have white gloves. So then Anna's department, not only is customer success, we can bring in contractors as event people to manage what she just said of finding ambassadors or partner with strategic influencer agencies who then also become our clients. So Dell has, and that's why we have a video of this and you heard Nicole Rex, she actually is on the program that is for future work. Remember I showed you two different- Circumstantial ambassadors. Yeah, but we've created case studies. So that's what I mean by taking that and going to a profit and saying, hey, we ran this program on the software and made 65% margins. That's higher than you're doing in live events or in ad sales. Why don't you go out there and sell to your clients and run these programs on it? So that's a big um, avenue of business uh, that we believe will will keep uh, it flourishing. Yeah. The, uh, you know, the applications seem endless. Uh, on how you could use the product, but I can totally see how you guys geeked out and spent time and focusing on the market with the higher margins, right? Yeah. Yeah, and where it really moves the needle. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. All right. Any other questions? Um, What what do you think... um, on on the the slide where you showed all the the pipeline and the current customers, the what's the you you made a comment about once you get to, to a certain point you can close them in a month, but what's the sales cycle for the big licenses been for you? Yeah, so we've had uh, we've actually broken that down. I don't have the number right in front of me. But um, I should add that back into our appendix. Um, we had a, uh, a slide that actually showed um, how our pack was so much shorter than the normal. So a normal enterprise uh, signing can be anywhere between nine and 12 months. Uh, IBM is a good example, right? They're a new client for us. The GM of the Adobe Group loves the product. And that has been about a four-month cycle. So it should be that will be wrapped up the, by the end of uh, middle of June. So they've already started the pilot. We already have paperwork, but going through the procurement on the MSA is taking a, a little bit longer, but four months seems to be the longest so far. And then our clients that actually want to be on it, usually like we had somebody two weeks ago that were like, hey, we'd love to have this. They're on our, our pilot program as well. So we have a three month pilot one that is around 15K that people can come in. They set it up use our template worlds. Remember, we have a hundred templates, best practices, all that. We didn't even show inside the world. There's a whole entire chat bot that you can ask questions to. Um, and so people can go in there. So that one was two weeks. So it, we've seen the range, two weeks to two months to four months. Yeah. Highly so right amazing. now, I think we're spinning about, we use pipe drive. Yeah. So, and um, we're spinning, I think there's about 32 right now, plate spinning on that. It's the founder of Pipe Drive I've known for years. It's, it's a good product. Yeah, you like it. It is a good product. Um, the uh, does somebody need to host the community, or can it just be always on? Uh, it can be always on. We've done it two different ways, and Anna guys speak this as well. You can turn off those bubbles, yeah. so you could just have it as a really awesome immersive website. And you can leave little notes and everything that's pulling in those tools. And then that's why if you notice that when's the next meeting, you can have something there that adds it to calendar and then rooms can unlock. Uh, Based yeah. on sign in and password, you could have different um, uh, access to things as well. So we have different users, admins, see everything, host, moderators, so different users. 
And so there doesn't need to be a moderator to no. for people to participate as long as it's uh, open. All right, so let's see what Dell and YouTube both feel like specific funnel evolution from collaborative work into education. Is internal training education a primary focus? If not, what are some other verticals where you're seeing use case traction? Okay. Can we uh, read again? Uh, I think I understand the question, like the funnel evolution from collaborative work. YouTube was never collaborative. Well, I guess it's internal collaborative. Uh, they're, you know, people learning. Learning is a big piece of this, not from an education, let me go do a curriculum. If someone wants to use that, they can build it out. The tools are there. But it's more of um, speaker series. Go ahead. It's more around speaker series. So if you think about when we say education for YouTube and Dell, it's not, you know, to Amber's point, virtual classes online, like master classes, that we're bringing very curated people from TikTok, from YouTube, that are going to uh, give them information that is going to help them, right? And same thing with like AT&T. But other use cases, like if for this brand and sports affinity, you know, what the question is, what is going to drive people to the world? And just to say, like, it's there, people aren't going to go to it. How often do you go to your own website unless you need to find information, right? So you have to give them a nugget to get them to come back through some type of programming, whether it is that attractive speaker, that uh, sports hero coming in that you get to do a Q&A with or a meet and greet, right? You're giving them a moment so that once they're comfortable in this space, then they can create their own organic moments with fans from around the world. And so you don't have to have a host in the room at all times. You can have these organic pop in, pop out, but you do need something like an exclusive shoe drop or something to get them there and to get them to keep coming back. So it's a, it's a mixture of the two for sure. Yeah, I always like to say it's a formula because A, we all learn differently, right? Like the mediums. Mm -hmm. So whether it's watching videos, reading or audio audibles, it's like there's that piece, but then the person in the room is a lot of times that communication. Like our dub hub is the open all the time in certain rooms. Oh, you want to go find a form, you want to understand. But then obviously we meet there every Monday and then we meet on like Wednesdays individually. So it's um we have found that those lunch and learns or like why we're all on here, right? There's a subject matter we're showing up for, but what's keeping me staying? Yeah. And that's kind of that formula. That surprise and delight is also a piece that like we didn't show you them, but there's like little gifs or like, and we'll have them in the hub later where like things come alive that are behavioral, that are really neat. Yeah. So do you do that creative work as a uh, service of the licensed contract or does the license E have the ability to customize that creative work? They sure do. They can do it. So that's what I meant by if you saw the rev share thing, the green that was programming, that's a separate cost. So setting up the room, they're all templatized, right? So that is a part of the product that we'll continue building out. Kind of if this, then this, then that. So here's future of work or here's team collaboration and it'll give you different rooms. As of now, we have them all in one piece so people can take them, download them and upload them into the product, but we will be building a library. Um, so as the product keeps growing. So yeah, so that that is, uh, if that answers that. Let's, yeah. Uh, okay, let's try this. For context, I come from a company that operates Discord environments for big brands in Web3. This is a, one of the attendees. Yeah. As a, an always on construct, it can be intimidating to operate for a company. Mm -hmm. And then a follow your product feels like it can solve a lot of these problems. Yeah, and Matt, you've had a lot of conversations around that. I know you actually even used to work uh, just like we did on Discord. You worked on the internal stuff. If you want to take that one a little bit. Sure. Um, yeah, I have some background with Discord as well. Definitely have some background with Web3 communities in Discord. <laughs> I think I think I ran out of slots in Discord, the amount of servers that I'm in. Um, yeah, I mean, one of the one of the things that relates to that is um, that three x participation. A lot of that comes from the fact that you can. There are more ways for you to express yourself, both synchronously and asynchronously, on this product compared to something like Discord. And in doing so, 
there's sort of a natural like self-regulation thing that goes into place when you feel more like you're a human in a space and not just like a name in a chat room. And what we end up seeing is that combined with kind of industry standard moderation tools, you know, the standard stuff like passwords, kicking, banning, you know, muting, all that's deleting chat messages, stuff like that. Those two things combined um, have shown us, and it's not a surprise to me being in this space for so long, have shown us that there's a pretty marked difference in the relaxed posture that we find brands or partner organizations or licensees end up taking when they come to, when they get their sea legs inside of a platform like this. Once they're past that sort of initial apprehension stage, um, you know, I, 15 years ago, I brought Toyota into the metaverse, into the, the virtual worlds for the first time. And I saw the exact same thing happen, right? They were uncomfortable at first. And then as soon as they saw this phenomenon in front of them, then they became more comfortable giving a little bit more control, a little bit more leaning into the expressive capability and potential of their biggest super fans as advocates. So like the answer to the question about how how brands can deal with that. It's a mixture of tools and bringing sort of the best out of human beings by kind of giving them more of an identity or an opportunity to express themselves and be themselves. Yeah, you know? and I think one of the biggest things on that note uh, for Alex is we've actually built this as well to where people can, if they have the experience of that community, now build on top of that. Of It's not just um, the community that gives you stuff because that's sometimes the problem with discord it's like it's just you've lost stuff it's all in the long messages and those forums here it can be curated and then have that as one piece of it not the whole entire okay. communication right I, I don't believe anything that only uses especially if our whole entire solution is because digital communication is broken and but real life is pretty awesome guys I don't want to replace real life this yeah. is that bridge in between and if that's the case, then how are we giving the tools that work for real life? Talking, you have your phone, you have your computer, you're always note-taking. Multiple different forms of medium have to be in one space. It cannot be reliant on just one form of medium. We saw that through Clubhouse. And Matt, when you were discussing that, it seemed to me that the perfunctory accepted guardrails to keep people from being idiots have been also accepted, right? Accepted by clients, you mean? Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. actively embraced and sought after, really. Yeah. Any, I mean, any of these brands that are, are not restricting access to already pre-vetted people, like invite only or future of work, that's all like internal FT employees, for instance, the minute that you start bringing in more users, more audience, and this is the case with YouTube, the way they, they use our platform, um, you know, very few brands, organizations are going to feel comfortable without that sort of base layer of protection in place. But we, what we find is that we build, a, we build a feature that we know we need to build more as an insurance policy. We never really, we just don't really seem to need it most of the time, really, if ever, in the experience we've had with these clients yeah. and their audiences. Yeah, we have like AI built in so that certain things are in the words. We can ban people or block them if we need to, but you're right, our data hasn't shown we've had to. So just to thank Alex there, he sure. says, thank you for the answers. We agree on the multi-medium and are building bridge tech to jump people seamlessly in and out of Discord into other platforms. And then he goes on to say he'll reach out and maybe be involved in the round. So we thanks. Up our our yeah. info email already, and I'm going to respond to this afternoon. So <laughs> I've already seen his name. Super. So we've gone over, but it's super cool. Uh, thanks, everybody. Nice to meet you guys. Uh, Amber, thanks for doing this again. I uh, really appreciate okay. it. And then we'll make sure everybody gets in touch. And, you know, maybe we can do it again sometime when things move a little farther along or whatever Love you it. want. Yeah, super, awesome. super, really, Bye. really interesting stuff. Yeah. Have thanks. a great day. Thank you. Yeah. And as I always say, thank you all for spending the only thing you can't make more of, and that's your time. Till next time, thank you. Take care. Thanks. Bye, y'all. Bye. Bye.